Dow. Dow Industrial is up 253. We get the Nasdaq up 235. S&P's up 43. Our guest today, folks, is Tory Nelson. Tory is running for the mayor of St. Pete. We have elections tomorrow. Tory's dedicated to building our community, making sure every voice is heard. You can find Tory's website, folks, at toryforsaintpete.godaddysites.com. Tory, welcome to TFNN. Thanks for having me, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Well, tell us why you want to be mayor of St. Pete. Oh, wow. Uh, we have an hour segment here. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it's so many different things um, that makes me want to become mayor. Uh, it's always been an aspiration of mine. But some of the main issues that I keep hearing around the community, I keep hearing people complain about affordability. And I feel, you know, it's time for me to step up, time for me to make my run, and time for me to uh, to make a change. Um, it's a lot of things. Environment. Um, I'm really big on environment. My background is law. But since I started my campaign, I became an environmentalist. And um, I want to restore our natural resources. I want to add biodiversity to our landscape. I want to overhaul our land with all our native plants so we can have ocean-friendly plants. And it's a ton of stuff, Tom. <laughs> so so let me ask you this. That, that, listen, that, those are great things, right? So mm -hmm. I know in Child's Park, okay, it, so did you open a homeless shelter in Child's Park? Or Tell me about that. Yes, sir, I did. Um, what I did, I took a student loan, and um, I got an agreement for deed. A lot of people don't know. Agreement, well, I'm a true American. My credit was shot, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I took agreement for deed. In Florida, agreement for deed is considered a sale. So at the height of my real estate career, um, I was up to, like, four transitional homes. So I took a student loan. I got a, a multifamily home. It was a Six to seven. It was a seven-bedroom house with a two-bedroom garage apartment, and I converted it to a transitional home. And like I said, at the height of my uh, real estate career, I was leasing one building, and I had uh, three, du two duplexes in that the one home in Child's Park. So I was up to four transitional homes, and I was taking a lot of people off the streets at one point. And when you do that, so we, were you getting paid by the state to do that? How does that work? I did it totally with no government funding. Okay. That's why I say I'm resourceful. Uh, like, I'm listening to your show, and you're talking about, you know, that's not my arena, investing, because I guess I got scared money. <laughs> they say scared money don't make no money. <laughs> but uh, I'm very resourceful. Um, I was running the uh, homeless shelter in Child's Park with, like, 1500 overhead. I paid my lights, my water, um, and my and mortgage. Made, what made you want to do that? Well, I was getting, I got ballot tested. I was constantly getting pro with, the, with different city departments, and, and I was lasting. Uh, I was meeting angels along the way. Different people that was living in my shelter was helping me. Okay. And, to, and uh, we just kept, I kept running for almost a decade. So let me ask you something. What do you, you know, every city has problems, okay? And the younger kids right now, and you know what's interesting, Tori? My take on the violence is right across the country is that, you know, I, I'm a lot older than you, in fact, 30 years older than you. <laughs> um, and when, sure. we were, when we were growing up, it was always the 14 to 18, you got to make it through that deal. And when I was growing up, it was very violent across the country when we were 14. It was 1964, you know, going forward. Then mm -hmm. it, it leveled out. What people don't understand right now is that the demographics right now are bigger than even that. So inside the major cities, like let's say inside, what can we do, do you think, in order to bring the violence down outside of education? I know ed education's huge. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, when these kids are out here, it, it's sad. Before, you know, when I was growing up, yeah, you might get stabbed. Now everyone's getting shot, though. It's a, it's a huge difference. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, a big part of it, I think, is the evolution of music. Um, music... When you're young, it kind of like influences you. Okay. You know, you, you, TV kind of influences you. you That's see right. Stuff, That's right. Yeah. So you see stuff and you want to kind of emulate it. You want to be like that person. And a lot of the rappers today, I believe they're glorifying guns and shooting and killing. And a lot of our youth, before their, their brain is, is like maturing, is actually going down this road. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It, I got one. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead, please. Um, I was the same way uh, when I was 14. Well, I was too. It's a great point, man. I mean, I, I, I love hearing this because this is the stuff that, you know, I tell people, you know, people don't understand you only know four square blocks when you're growing up, man. And then all of a sudden you get outside and say, hey, man, the whole rest of the world's not like this, okay? So, so mm -hmm. th that's interesting, man, and, and I can see that. So how, how do we get into these kids' heads and just say, hey, man, can you, like, just 
give it a break for a few years because you're going to get over 19 or 20, and then you will we'll start thinking a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah um, definitely. Um, I think maybe if we inform the kids, like uh, anger management, a lot, if, we can, if we can implement anger management because one second of getting angry, because a lot of t kids are told guns. They don't know the consequences. If we can let them know the consequences, right. yeah, constantly reinforce and kind of like pretty much brainwash them. The same thing they're seeing and or listening to on TV, we brainwash the same positivity. Hopefully, it'll level that out a little bit. Um, and then so I guess I guess another question would be this. Okay, so you you open a homeless shelter, which is awesome. You're you're going to be a dynamite activist. I'm to tell you, I, I, we know. Listen, you're not going to be mayor tomorrow, but that's all right. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm glad you're running. That's a that's the <laughs> bottom line. But you'll be a great activist. So let, let me ask you this. So mm -hmm. you know, we have communities in need. All right. You, you already opened a homeless shelter. Now let's talk about, let's say that, you know, someone's already got in trouble. They're in the can. They can back out of the can. Okay. Now the question is, how do we help them? Because you can't go back to the same corner. If you go back to the same corner, you're going to go back to your friends and all of a sudden there's trouble again. It's like, okay, man. So how do we help folks that have gotten trouble? You know, and most of the trouble is not serious trouble at the beginning. Okay. It's, it's petty trouble, but then all of a sudden, then, hey, guess what? You get those, you know, cocky pants and you're coming back out. How can we help kids that are coming back out of jail so that they can basically get into the, the system without basically doing 10,000 hoops? Yeah, that's a great question. See, um, uh, you told me to shy away from education, but uh, that has a lot to do with it. I think it does. No, it does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it gives you a better quality of life. A lot of kids, they might come out and, you know, and they can't get jobs for their record. Right. So a lot of them have to turn into entrepreneurs. And it's just like keeping up with the Joneses. Our economy is just thriving right now down here in St. Pete. Yes. Yeah, rent skyrocketing. So it's hard for a guy, say, I'll just say a guy, to be the head of his household. Um, you want to have a girlfriend. You want to have a family. But you constantly got your girl on your head. You can't make enough money. You can't get a job. So you ultimately got to turn back to the street life. So with better education, I believe maybe we can implement some reentry programs to teach them to be entrepreneurs. Um, hopefully that can help because basically there's no second chances once you once you get in trouble. And right. I, right. I'm a living testament of that. Uh, I graduated with a bachelor's degree, two degrees actually, and I got in trouble. And I like your uh, the quote you just said a little while ago. Uh, if you live in the past, you forget yeah. the dream. Yeah, isn't that a great card, man? Yeah, you gotta be here now, man. I know. I'm gonna start using that. But that, um, listen, man, I will I will send you that quote. Well, listen, man, okay. this has been a pleasure. I um, look forward to having you on again. And uh, bottom line, I hope you get a lot of votes tomorrow, man. You know, you're gonna you're gonna be around. That's a beautiful thing. Oh, thank you, Tom. I appreciate you having me. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, Tori. Have a great one. Have a safe one. You too. Thank you. Thank you. That's Tori Nelson, folks. He's running for mayor. Tomorrow are our elections in St. Pete. Uh, his website is Tori for St. Pete, GoDaddy.GoDaddySites.com. Dow Industrials right now up at 256. You get the Nasdaq up 240. S&P's up 43. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. <laughs>